What do we got for tonight? Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. I think uh, I'm, a, I'm a Buddhist. My dad died last year and I saw him a few times in my dreams asking me to help him. I came to know about Fatima Zara water well program from one of your students and sponsored <laughs> one water well for him. Then in my dream I saw him living in a peaceful neighborhood with green fields, birds and other animals. He looked good and happy and he told me not to worry about him anymore. This has given me so much peace. Thank you so much for such blessings. Wa alaykum as MashaAllah, very good. Beautiful. Continue to, to do what is given to you as a sign of this beautific reality inshaAllah. And it's so simple that you just say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah wasallam, And be one that submits themselves to the will of God Almighty and to do good deeds and good actions and good thoughts inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, when Imam Ali Islam rode off and appeared to be completely fine, where did he go? And is Imam Ali still fighting aliens and demons till this day for Prophet to protect his nation? Yeah, read, read or not the Ali. Uh, Haji Shahzad, let's go. لك هل اسم يا علي يا من باع الجود كنوز العلم يا علي صور الموجك مولدك مبتسم يا علي يا اخر دنيا من هجك نلتزم يا علي عن قلب صادق بالعدل معتسم يا علي انت لواء الفخر والمناقب وجوهر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. العزة والمواهب أنت لباء الفخر والمناقب وجوهر العزة والمواهب علي 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 يا علي 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 يا علي أشرف اسمك فوق ضمير كتاب يا علي اسمع فضلك نال على رتاب يا علي ما يوم نورك يا بحسن حجاب يا علي هي حلف الضبارين الوجودك بهاب يا علي هي كل الوجود الترب انت زهاب يا علي هي حبك فريد وبشراعي بجام يا علي هي شانك فوق الشان والمراتب يا بلغة الإحسان والمقاصب شانك فوق الشان والمراتب المراتب يا بلغة الإحسان والمقاصد علي 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 يا علي
علي علي علي علي علي للكون انت السر انت العمان يا علي بوجودك دينا هنيف المجان يا علي يا اسد غالب ما شبيهك اسد يا علي وبزود خالق يا حيدر شهد يا بالحشر بس حبك يا حيدر سند يا علي لا مال الفال أهل لا ولد يا علي يوم زهور الفرل والمطالم لا ينفع الأدنى من الأقارب يوم زهور الفرل والمطالم لا ينفع الأدنى من الأقارب علي 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 يا علي 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 يا علي نادي علي المظهر الأجائب تجد هو ونلك في النوائب نادي علي المظهر الأجائب تجد هو ونلك في النوائب علي 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 يا علي 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 يا علي اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله الحمد لله the Nadi Ali describes it in the Kalam of Awliya. So and that translation was washed down for people to understand it is actually much deeper than that. So Allah left the presence of Imam Ali Salam as an immense support for the deen and that uh, Sahib and Imdad, the one whom supports all awliyaullah and they don't reach sainthood without the signature of Sayyidina Imam Ali Salam. So then the people must be taught to love and respect and revere his holy soul and his holy presence. So it plays many, many roles in this reality and the reality of, of energy, the reality of keeping the connection, keeping the, the faith to be clean. So it has a very important reality, immense, immense reality. And for those whom are waiting for Sayyidina Mahdi salam, then even more so because that's his grandson. So imagine then the power that Imam Ali salam has been given by Allah and that the love for them, reverence for them, respect for them that brings so much goodness into the heart, goodness into the character. And they are the example of the way of chivalry. Each of the holy companions they have an example for us and the four represent the, the four corners of our heart. Means the Qalb al-Muhammadi has four vows, one for Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, Omar, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam Ali Salam. So these four holy khalifas are four valves of the heart of the believer for the Muhammadan heart. So they play the role of the completion. If one of them is not loved and revered you would probably have a heart attack. Means there's something deficient within your qalb and your, your reality and your yaqeen. So can't be each have a reality that is important for us. Each have the, the reality of, of our struggle in Divinely Presence. And you have to get Lataif al Qalb and the book on the heart and read and become a student of the house of Allah Means if you love Allah you want to know what His house is like then you buy the book on the Lataif al Qalb or study it from the website so that you understand this is the house. When we're talking about Lataif is the house of Allah So. Who are the angels in this house? Who are the prophets of this house? Who are the holy companions of this house? Who are the zikrs of this house? It's all related. So if the lataif of the Qa'd has to do with Sayyidina Jibra'il and then somebody was asking and were watching a video and a boy was asking and you see how the knowledge they have is so superficial compared to the knowledge of awliya. He's asking, what this uh, Sayyidina Jibreel brought the message to Prophet Okay that now that the message has come to earth, what does Sayyidina Jibreel do now? 
<laughs> yeah, so it's, it's a different reality. That's why if they were students of the reality we would understand that at just one understanding he's the conveyor of knowledge. That all uloom and knowledge that flowing onto this earth is under the, the khadam of Sayyidina Jibra'il he's responsible, he's vigilant for it. That yellow light that comes to the heart of the servant is the light from Sayyidina Jibra'il and that Allah when creating His reality created it from the shape of the ha and put a nukht within his belly, within his heart of his being in which to carry the realities of the nukht. So this is an immense reality of Sayyidina Jibra'il but then the servant has to study the lataif since I want my qalb to open, I want the reality of that to open. So who's the angel at that reality? Then who's the holy companion? You need the love of Sayyidina Uthman, Jami al-Qur'an al-Majeed because he's responsible for knowledges to come. So it means that the, which Prophet is responsible for that? Sayyidina Adam so it means all of it is interlinked like a tasbih but you have to study the curriculum and you would understand these realities and the depth of the reality. For any lover of the house of Allah and the presence of Allah you'd think they'd be inspired to know the depth of these realities. But the majority of people their depth of Islamic is, is very superficial. What did they do? They came, they went. No, this is a continuous cycle of reaching deep into realities that never ends and that you need to have that relationship with Sayyidina Jibra'il for example just that and that that light has to be put into your heart so that His presence is always inside of your soul sending you all of your isharat and your guidance. So alhamdulillah. That Allah inspired people to come towards Naqshbandiyatul Aliyya and the immense realities that this tariqah holds and that these hearts hold from the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi. InshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, based on adab who? As women in meditation, should we focus to connect our heart through Hajja Amina to Fatima Zahra Hajja Amina, yeah, connect with Hajja Amina like we've described many times. And then you take the teachings of your shaykh and the knowledges and but to connect your heart and visualize, visualize with Hajja Amina to make the Naqshbandi connection and then visualize your presence with the shaykhs and then to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And at any time somebody feels the connection to other holy souls and Ahlul Bayt then alhamdulillah. But don't, don't add things that weren't added in, keep it to the way it's been taught. I think the natural desire for people is to customize everything. So they, they email many times in the override, instead of this can I recite that, instead of this can I do that. Like you get a car and say, can I paint the wheels this color? This is not something to be customized, do exactly to how they're teaching so that the outcome will be consistent. When you customize at home and then email, it's not working. Years later they'll tell you, oh yeah I changed this and then I changed that and then I recite this and oh I, had, I was in three tariqahs. So I recite, oh they're all rights. So the natural desire, so when we work somewhere the natural desire is you come in, as soon as you go to the computer screen you change everything and you try to mark it as your territory. Animal Kingdom does that too. They come in and the animals they mark their territories to say, this is my area. But this is a haywan and the wildness for, for the heavens we don't need that character to make this uniquely mine and that I've modified and changed it. What's necessary is just to fall in line and do what's necessary to reach the goal. That way the shaykhs know why would it be opening if, if you're doing everything that they're teaching and all the practices that they're teaching then alhamdulillah everything should be opening. 
and the madad should be opening and we describe everything like a child. Think yourself no, not an intellectual scientist but you're a child and you look at your… if you have a family, you look at your children, you don't even need to explain what them madad is, right? They love you. You if you walk like a duck they follow you. Did you have to intellectually explain that to them? When they were two years old you sat them on the couch and said, when I walk you follow me like a duck. No, it's they naturally love you. So Allah's showing you, look how nice people can do things with love. But as soon as you become big and a little bit hairier it becomes so complicated because it's always in the mind that, how, how shaykh, how am I supposed to connect? It's not here, you just have to have love in your heart. If you love Prophet and you love the one whom representing the knowledge is bringing you from the table of Prophet and feeding you the haqqaiqs of Prophet this is a kawthar for you. You're eating it, drinking it, sort of uh, absorbing yourself within it, naturally your heart would be falling in love with Prophet deeper and deeper that you want to be in that reality. Just the, the sound and the mention of his nasheeds when your heart is, is sitting and meditating and crying because you're yearning to be in that presence, that's not something that can be taught. So we'll, we do the scientific stuff because scientists out there until they can reach love they have to come through their science. But everybody else, look at your children, you don't have to teach them anything. You walk around, some people walk around their pets follow them. They walk and everything starts to follow them, why? It's just love. The one feeding them, the one treating them with gentleness, kindness and love, then it is, this is the madad, this is complete understanding of madad. And that's what's necessary now is just people to come with their hearts, love and appreciate, revere and respect and the rest leave the heart to connect and to feel the connection and, and the the great presence and love of Sayyidina Muhammad and you find that love is miraculous. That when you do things out of love, you know, the bounty of Allah is unexplained. The man describing from a fountain, we gave the stories of awliya of the past. The, the awliya were selling little sticks and made these little tiny sticks and made it into a house. And when people were coming and passing by, he says, do you want to buy one of these houses made from little sticks? He said, what is this? This is says, your house in paradise, do you want one? So how much for it? You can give a price for it. But he didn't think you're using your mind where your mind comes and says, well how this house is going to get me a house up there? I said, because God works in mysterious ways. If you can conquer your brain because your brain telling you this no way this little thing is going to get me a house up there, only your heart could tell you that. So people whom their hearts were soft they immediately understood, yeah this house will get me a house back there because I believe it will. And Allah never disappoints His real servants because they believe it will, Allah will make it to happen. And that's where the miracles between the servant and Allah The shaykhs merely instigate an act of faith and see what you really have, right? To put it in front of you with your mind says, not going to happen. No, of course not, your, your level of belief is not going to happen because you don't believe it's going to happen. So it's between you and Allah you have a doubt, not me, I have no doubt. But when the servant comes sincere, and they know how much they love Allah they know how much they love Prophet and in their heart they say, yes it's going to happen because this is what I believe and Allah never disappoints His servant, he said, it will happen. But it may not happen on your time but it will happen what Allah wants. So these are the… this is the miraculous way based on each person's individual faith. Some person may think nothing will take a situation to be better and whatever they do nothing will make it better. So everyone has uniquely their level of belief and sincerity.
The shaykhs merely bring about the testing and the facility to facilitate that test like an exam office. As soon as you took the test Allah gave the reward. So alhamdulillah this is in every aspect of our life. You may do something so small you don't think it to be big, may be huge based on your faith in Allah what He was looking for, inshaAllah. But Allah works in mysterious ways. So never in, in a logical way, never will you think through your brain something but through your heart. The, the, the reward is for the one whom acts upon their heart, not their intellect. If Allah rewarded your intellect, well then you would be a big alien with a head this big. But He wants the servants to have little head and big heart like a bird, right? We said the bird his brain is like a pea, it's this big. It never occurred to the bird that he can't fly, right? He just has a big heart and he jumps and he goes 10,000 feet in the air. But the bigger the brain the less they could fly. So humans then got a big brain and they realize they can't fly anymore, they can do nothing because their head is this big and the heart is this big. So Allah gives us a, look at this, this nature, why don't you just lose your head and increase the size of your heart and you fly like you can't imagine and you'll make everything else fly, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam wa I've been studying electronics at my job and everything you've been teaching is the same as they are uh, saying. I find it amazing about how transformers work and how energy can be transferred. Thank you so much. MashaAllah we gotta get some energy guys to come start putting stuff out because uh, the, the immensity of, of that knowledge and uh, the lack of Muslim understanding that you said before, now they're, they're coming back with the copper understanding. Before all the buildings had copper domes, uh, upper, copper coils. Copper was everywhere because it's a transducer and conducts electricity. And in the atmosphere, in the ether there's free energy, doesn't need any combustion and exploding, doesn't need anything. But these people of dunya they wanted to sell everything, they took those down and they said, okay you can buy your energy by exploding and combusting and making explosions for engines. But the way of the past is the energy is everywhere, how to bring it now and, and use it. Then bringing this energy how then to electrify and energize areas and spaces. So before in the prayer halls and cathedrals and the masjids all of these energies and these minarets and all of these things brought a tremendous amount of, of energy into an atmosphere, healing by energy, by sound, by vibration. So that's why if we understand Islam through energy then we have the common denominator, not through dogma. Because nobody here are going to battle people on usul and fiqr. But if we bring everything to a common understanding of energy, you see people come in droves because energy makes sense to them. You want to increase your energy, come. You want to protect yourself from negative energy, come. Everything from Islam is about the energy. Everything that Prophet gave to us was about energy. And it only became relevant in the last days because that's what's going to happen. The last days will be the time in which you know great amount of horrific energies enter and the people will be in need of how to build their energies, how to eat from energy, how to bring the energy to heal and Islam has the answer. Not the scientists, they were the ones hiding it for the longest period of time. So that's, that's the greatness for our people whom are inspired in these different fields, study it and see how it relates to the, the teachings, how it relates to vibration and sound. And everything about our deen is about sound and vibration, calling of the azan is sound, reciting Qur'an is sound. And these vibrations they can crush negative energies and they can magnify positive energies and healing and healing states inshaAllah. Uh, 
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. So is it recommended to wear a copper bracelet for energy purposes? You can have the, the copper bracelet, silver bracelet. They're good for healing and energy on the body. So they have, they have all of these. If you go back again to traditional Islam, all of the armory had writing on it. So people are, are not familiar with it when they see the site and they say, oh why this has this on it, this has all these things, writings on it because all of the traditional armory, because we're not going to put armor on the website but it should be a everyday armor is just your taweez and your shirt, your clothing, your jackets, everywhere you go has to be just like armor because you're spiritually arming yourself that in an abode of energies and frequencies that are now cooking and, and cooking people's brains and minds and every type of energy then naturally your shirt and sweatshirt should have all taweezes upon them. If a day comes and you have to go into a battlefield I would imagine you would have the same response and that your armour would then have all taweezes and, and kalima and salawats upon it as the descendants of prior times. So it's just reintroducing our own faith back to us that people seem to be ajeeb and always the same comment, how would you go to the washroom with these things? I say, Yahoo why, why you keep asking this ridiculous question, take that thing off before you go to the bathroom with anything. Just like the Qur'an app you're not going to take these things in there. So the things that your aqal tell you don't belong in wash facility, leave it out. But this is for everyday use, everyday walking, everyday events is a combating immense negative energies where the, the grave and the water fountain of feeding people makes a person's grave to turn to behisht. Why? Because of the sake of Sayyidatina Fatima Tazari salam and the sawab and the blessings that take an idol worshipper into paradise from water. He didn't say his father was a martyr, he said his father was a Buddhist. This is the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad You don't think that Fatima Zara is, is, is interceding and say, for the sake of you, you made a well for my name to give back to my children and my people and make one dua to Allah through the holy heart, everything will be solved. The whole earth can be under the intercession of Sayyidatina Fatima Zara And it's still nothing, it's not a big power needed from her holy soul. And the other one whom who sent that his asa, he merely brought his asa into the home and he said the whole home changed, every difficulty began to change. Why? No, be, we described the sunnah of the asa represents the madad and support of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. You think after alayhi salam, after you hear that reality you don't think he's coming now with everything? He say that, but you because you heard that you acted on that, no doubt I'm with you. I came to help Sayyidina Musa What do you think about my own nation, the ones whom love my own Prophet If they help the Prophets of Bani Israel what do you think they would do for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad Means this is who we have guarding us, these are the people whom love us and we love them not by tongue but by action. So this, this, these powers these are immense. When you keep yourself with these taweezes, you keep yourself with the sunnah, you keep yourself with the ring and the ring and the power of Imam Ali salam, then you put it on saying, Ya Rabbi what you granted of these powers that grant me the nazar of Imam Ali salam and open for me what you open for Sayyidina Sulaiman Ali salam. Why wouldn't Allah open that for the nation of Prophet in which He put the budal, nujab, nuqab, awtadul, akhyar, jinni wa malaika under the hand of that servant. When Allah says in Holy Qur'an, Subhana ladhi bi yadihi mulk, glory be to the hand that holds my kingdom, my mulk. If the hand from that kingdom must have a ring from Imam Ali because it's the sunnah of that right hand, it's not left hand. 
right? The sunnah is to the right. Imagine then Allah is giving Subhanu bi yadihi, Subhana ladi bi yadihi, glory be to the hand. If Allah's glory is on the hand, you better believe that hand must be in sunnah, right? It can't be a bare hand. So then Allah is giving a hint in that Subhan that the madad of Imam Ali is with you now because it's the hand of Allah the support of Sayyidina Muhammad and the ring of Imam Ali So now you have Allah Muhammad and Ya Ali, now you understand the phoenix, Ahumma ya rahmah. If all are birds then the phoenix of Ar-Rahmah, the phoenix of Ar-Rahman is Imam Ali There's a bird like no other bird and it's a bird with fire that will burn everything that tries to chain it. Means dunya can't chain it, dunya can't chain that reality. That was the secret of the Huma. That as much as dunya tried to change it, immediately it became the fire from Divinely Presence. Why? To burn anything from dunya so that it can't be chained by dunya. So, I mean, so much of Qur'an and realities of Qur'an, all imagine Allah subhana ladi bi yadi, He's giving a, a, a praise upon that hand that has the mulk and malakut in it. What that hand must have if Allah is praising upon it? It must be from the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad and upon it must be a, a ring from the support of Imam Ali because the hand has to have sunnah, it can't be without the sunnah. So immensely powerful nation. But do they need that power? No, no. But when you walk with it, it's there, it's your protection, it's, it's the way. You never know what is needed, you, you go somewhere something is incorrect, something wrong, this sunnah activates itself. You don't even have to know what your cane is doing, you merely walk through the darkness or difficulty, the cane has its own reality, it knows how to do what it needs to do. It doesn't need instructions from you, if anything it will teach you what its reality is, not you going to teach him what the reality is, right? Because Musa didn't know what his cane did. So how am I going to activate it? Allah <laughs> just said, throw it down, leave it alone, he knows what to do himself. He threw it, became a dragon from Divine the Presence and ate their magic. He didn't need instruction, didn't say, okay now tell the dragon do this, now tell the dragon do that. He said, what I have to do is actually you don't have to do anything, get your hand off of it, drop it down. Immediately the cane became a dragon from Divine the Presence, not magic. And that's why their magicians may sujood and accepted Allah said, this is not magic what he's bringing because they knew magic. When his dragon appeared it swallowed their magic and the magicians had such a yaqeen that they accepted, they accepted the Islam and, and the prophecy of Sayyidina Musa and entered completely into faith. So this is uh, the greatness of Prophet and the sunnah, the madad, the support and that's what we hear with all these emails and, and, and the miraculous path that we're on but requires us to believe and act on our belief inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa since the zikr of La ilaha illallah is the first zikr, when should we be making it outside of the Fajr awrad and what should we envision through the heart? Yeah, I think that we have it on the wazifa of the Fajr, that's enough. You don't have to add any other etiquettes like what we talked about earlier. Do your awrads, that's it. And do the daily wazifa, do the dalal khirat because all of these mixtures have to be put into the pot. So 
when you're in the fajr and you're going, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, again in your meditation you see the movement of light. The lah comes from your belly to the forehead becomes la into your forehead. Then to the right, the reality of the, the heart on the right and the heart on the left because you're a reflection. Your reality is facing the different way. So when you go, La ilaha illallah, you're bringing an energy from the to the forehead and an energy to the right and illallah into the heart. And that take the servant to a state of death. So in the fajr as if they're trying to shut off their system when they're making that zikr. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, these lights later will take the servant to a state of death. But not for now, that's just a, a knowledge. For now it's moving that light to burn the head so that you're not a person who thinks with your head and that you move that light into the right and then illallah hitting like an explosive light into the heart. So that you feel the like a explosion of light into your heart, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. And later they can train with holding their breath and saying, La ilaha illallah, illallah, La ilaha illallah. And holding their breath and how many times they can recite, La ilaha illallah with their holding of their breath. They take a breath and then recite and recite and then exhale out. So these are the different practices when you're doing the La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. And at the end of La ilaha illallah because it's a state of death then every cessation or revival is with Muhammadun Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah, the shaykhs can take themselves to mouth and revive their heart with Muhammadun Rasulullah So at the end of the recitations of La ilaha illallah, the last is Muhammadun Rasulullah But do the basics, don't get caught up on, on one particular. Do your basics and make your connection, make the madad very strong, make your connection very strong in which you making your madad, you're visualizing and when the connection is strong asking that I don't want to exist, that I don't want to be, I don't want to be too, that I want the madad of the shaykh to be upon me and I cease to exist. And then see yourself vanishing and then you see the, the image of the shaykh upon ourselves. And take that image to be upon yourself and make yourself to disappear and vanish. The more you can vanish then the more the appearance of the shaykh can take place. So that you have the muhabbat, you have the love because you're listening, now you enter, enter into the hudur, into the presence of the shaykh. And if you can keep that hudur then you're slowly moving into the fana. And that fana then the shaykh would dress you from their hearing, from their seeing, from their knowledges, from their… it's the holy hadith. I become the eyes in which you see, the ears in which you hear, that, that hadith is the state of fana and that's what will be dressed upon the servant. From the fana of the shaykh, again the same cycle then up to the presence of Prophet the muhabbat al nabi uh, Hudur al-Nabi and the fana of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. But that has to be mastered through the state of the shaykh inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah He's reciting Duru Sharif in a state where you're not paying attention, still accepted. Sometimes I find it hard to concentrate for long periods of time doing zikr. 
Yeah, during zikr, I mean, there's always a time you're just you're doing your durood sharif and that alhamdulillah that's the durood sharif. Then there are times that you're very vigilant on your recitation, there's other times that you're meditating. E each has its own reality. You have uh, 10 to 20,000 durood sharif, so then you can be with your family and keep making your salawat because it's a cleansing, it's like washing. You're taking a shower, it's cleaning. Now, are you present and conscious of the shower that can be something different in which you're very meticulously concentrating that has its own power and reality. But to continuously polish the heart with the salawat and dhikrullah, salawat and nabi then highly recommended no matter what you're doing, making your salawat, sitting with your family while they're watching TV, make your salawat. That they never time not to unless it's a busy bus and outside in public inshaAllah. You don't want to attract too much negative energies and, and you get the burdens of other people, inshaAllah. As Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah How do we protect ourselves from a nuclear war? Uh, make sure you have your sunnah on, make sure you have your asa, make sure you have your, your ring and uh, lots of salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad means that this, this way of love is very miraculous. So you know they've already seen, the shaykhs have already seen the, the type of, of uh, protection Allah inshaAllah will release and we, I think we've described for people who've listened before that from the, the jinn world they have their own understanding of how to protect people from these types of events that they'll come and enter into community and begin to surround them and teach them to take a deep breath. And as they breathe they'll enter into a shield of energy from their kingdom and they breathe in this shield that covers them and the jinn will be dispatched to the people whom written for them to be with Sayyidina Mahdi and they appear to them and begin to teach them immediately enter into your breath and as they breathe this shield from their kingdom comes and shields them bi izzatullah by the might of Allah that whatever energy comes not to do with them. And that's under Ayatul Kareem, Qulana yusibana wa kataballahu lana Mawlana alayhi wa tawakkali mu'minun. What we said 9, 51. Surah Tawbah verse 51 is a, a very powerful ayat al Qur'an that will be activated for Sayyidina Mahdi that will keep those whom are safeguarded and whom written to be with Sayyidina Mahdi that they memorize that and repeat that, Wulana Yusifana wa Qatabullahu. Nothing, for verily nothing will happen to the believers that not written in the book of Allah and have the believers put their faith and trust in Allah that Ayatul Kareem activated and by means of how that will happen, one of the understanding is that the jinns will begin to appear, they're already safeguarding people now and will teach them how to inhale to bring a shield of energy that's all around them. And that shield of energy then they're going to sujood and shield them from whatever explosions or whatever atrocities people are trying to put onto this earth. Although they wish to extinguish the light of Allah they never can extinguish it. So shaitan plans, Allah's plan is much better and predominant, they already planned, encompassed, encompassed all plans. So alhamdulillah, Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amin yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Ashhadu an la ilaha Amen. So Juma Mubarak to everyone and that Allah Oh, 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 important that uh, Salat, Salat al Kafar Dunub, then they're saying is tonight. Because they asked last week, I said, why, why next Friday? I thought Friday is going to be all the way in the thing. No, the Saudis announcing Eid is Friday. So tonight is the last Friday of the, of the month. This is Salat al Kafar Dunub that like a thousand, thousand years of prayer and the awrad for it is on the app. You go under the du'as, the Salat al-Kafar 
is a, is a gift in the month of Ramadan on the last Friday night tonight that has the four rakahs what to recite, the du'as to be recited so that Allah grant us any, any lost prayers in our life or if we prayed late in our life or came to Islam late or we didn't miss, you'd be granted in this one night like a thousand years of salah inshaAllah. Allah's immense rahmah and mercy that comes in the holy month of Ramadan inshaAllah so that to protect us and grant us this immense ni'mat and blessing. So that inshaAllah will be tonight and so we posted that also onto Facebook that inshaAllah is coming tonight because the Saudis are announcing Friday as Eid. So then that would make the last Friday of the month tonight inshaAllah. And this is Juma al wada the last of the Jummah inshaAllah, tomorrow inshaAllah. InshaAllah bin niyata khatmi khawjigan, Jummah al-Wida. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.